You know, I realize what I took from somebody. I live with that every day. I spent more time in prison than I have on the streets. You know, I go to board in a year and a half after almost 22 years, and I'm scared. I'm terrified. I don't have nothing. I don't own anything. I've never paid bills. I've never had to be a responsible and accountable human being who contributed to society. And that terrifies me. I consider myself lucky if I'm given an opportunity to get out. I know that I have an obligation as a person to be successful. And that doesn't mean having a ton of money. Being successful to me doesn't mean having a ton of money. It means being a good person. It means giving back. It means taking care of my family. It means being there for the people who's been there for me. I know that I want to be happy. I want to be, I want to wake up every morning in a bed next to somebody who I love and who loves me. And I'm thankful that if I get that opportunity that I'm not going to, I'm not going to ruin it. I'm not going to destroy it because I know what it means to take something from somebody. I know what it means to struggle. I know what it means to, to lay awake at night and realize that this is my reality. Prison is my reality right now. And I just need one shot, one opportunity to, to change that reality. And I know when I'm given that opportunity that I'll be successful. It's gonna happen. prison that houses just over 4,000 guys. And over 700 of those individuals are housed on death row here at this prison. Uh, another 1,300 or so are in what we call a reception center. And then we have a general population of about 2,000 individuals. About 1,400 of those individuals are sentenced to an indeterminate life sentence, meaning that they do have the opportunity to work their way out of prison. Here at San Quentin, we were ahead of the curve in believing that men could be reformed. The level two inmates, they have some time under their belt. They're starting to think about who they need to be. We're trying to get them into some education programs, see if we can get them to start turning their lives around. To be successful, they need to learn a trade, go out, get a job, and keep that job. A lot of talk is around recidivism. That means somebody was harmed again. So part of this is about public safety. You don't want these men and women to come back and create any more harm. We believe, and the research shows, that if people have a true skill, they're less likely to return to prison. In the early time at San Quentin, there were a lot of shops in here, a print shop, a jute mill, the furniture factory, which still exists. The biggest asset here at San Quentin was the war effort. They made ammunition boxes, mess kits, hammocks, things like that. But the thing that backed it up was the machine shop to make all the parts. We have a machine shop that's not even being used right now. We're like in the past century. We're not even close to being a modern day machine shop. We need to be using CNC technology throughout the program.
to allow those folks to come back to their communities ready to stay and be positive community members. I need Titan to help me. He was a guy who had an experience like the guys who are behind me right now. Most guys who have that type of experience, not only is it surreal coming back if you're doing the right thing, no one ever wants to come back. Uh, and so for us, it was interesting to get this guy who was willing to, to come back in and say, you know what, I want to give back, I want to help somebody. Speaking on behalf of the warden of San Quentin, we couldn't say anything but yes, come on and help our guys get the opportunity to, to exit these walls and earn a wage to where they don't return. That's what rehabilitation is about. I spent time in a lockdown cell because of the wrong choices that I had made. I feel like for the first time, what I did in the past can now be used for good. I take this as the biggest opportunity that has ever come into my life. CNC machining saved my life. It gave me purpose, and because I got a second chance, I look at these men, and all I want to do is help them get the same second chance that I did. These guys are just like me. And as I step up on this stage to talk to these men, I know that I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. I know what it is to be in a lockdown cell by yourself for six months, to know that your entire life is done, to know that your kids are on the outside and they're never gonna see you. Like, I understand. It takes a certain type of individual to come in here with his past, with his being involved in the prison system, and to be real about it. My time in, in here, 20, 21 years. I've experienced a lot of people come in and not be worth their salt. He's gone through what I've gone through. And he's qualified to speak to the people in here. You know, being arrested 21 times before I was 14 years old, and the only thing I knew how to do was fight. Hundreds and hundreds of street fights. Went to a nightclub, fights break out across the club. Somebody puts his hand, pushes me back. I got everything going for me. I just take one step back, one step in, boom. Head hits the concrete. Then I hit his friend. Then I threatened people. 10 years, five years, one year, 16 years. My life is done, like it's done. Like, how did this happen? This is not easy for me. I ruined somebody's life. They have to pay the cost because of my actions, and I can't take that back. I can only go forward and do as much positive, as much good as possible. I couldn't even count how many times somebody looked at me and said, you're a criminal. That's Titan. That's the guy. This guy's a fake. I'm still the guy that is incredibly aggressive but I channel it in a positive, man. I channel it in a positive. 16 years in prison, I'm making parts that are going to Mars. You know what I'm saying? 
I started getting kind of focused, like, man, I can still do something with my life. In California, there's about 130,000 men and women incarcerated. About 90% will be going back to their community. Now what? You have to give people an opportunity to change. I am not a machinist, and I'm looking for help to get these things up and running again. It's at San Quentin State Prison. Uh, it's been built over time. But I'm, come, I'm here to ask for your help. To, what should this look like? Awesome. What should we do to help these students? I think there's an opportunity because I have one program where there's no instructor right now. I don't know if this equipment is something that people still use today. My father-in-law owned a machine shop, and he comes across a show where the focus is on modern-day manufacturing. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah, okay, it's another reality TV show. Uh, that's great. I don't know how that helps me. And then he starts talking a little bit more, and he's like, this person actually did time. And now he owns a high-end machine shop. So I get it in my mind. I'm going to show up unannounced. I'm going to knock on the door, and I'm going to figure out a way to have a conversation with Titan Gilroy. So you asked me to come back to prison. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, now that you, you put it that way, yeah, that's a, yes, I'm yeah, asking you crazy. to come back it's to crazy. prison. It's crazy. It's a crazy thought, but, you know, uh, where I've been and with the experience I have with the machines and stuff, I mean, it's just like, it seems kind of meant to be, so I'd love to come down and check it out, see what you guys got going on down there. I'll give you an honest evaluation of where I think you are, you know what I mean? And, uh, if there's anything I can do to help, of course, I'm in it, you know, so I'm excited. CNC machining, San Quentin prison. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> Titan gives me a tour of the facility. He shows me these control panels, and you have a machinist that's at each one of these control panels, and you can just see these tooling just doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And then I can see the actual completed part and a parts rack right next to it. I'm looking at the contrast between San Quentin and what I'm seeing in technology on the floor, which worried me. It's not good for the students to put them through a program, have them spend a lot of time on machinery, and have them go out into the community and say, you are a machinist. Well, what I saw on Titan's floor, they're not a machinist. They weren't a machinist for the 21st century. I come in here and this is like, it's kind of weird, but it's almost like I feel home, like it's my boys. Like I feel at home, and that's why I'm here. To be able to take guys who have lived in darkness, guys who have made mistakes, guys who have done their time, and give these guys the same opportunity that was given to me that's an incredible honor right there. This is a miracle. I'm not proud of who I was or what I did in my past, but it qualifies me to walk boldly right now. Nobody else can come in here knowing what I know, having the experiences that I have, and actually do what I'm about to do. The only reason I'm here only reason is because of my faith. As soon as he started talking, I, I felt a sense of relatability. I could see a man who's pouring out of his heart. He was coming from a good place and he, was, he wanted to change men's lives. We have to create a program to make you valuable to an employer so you can walk out and get a good paying job. I'm gonna create projects. We're gonna start off with just taking raw stock and doing simple shapes. And then we're gonna go all the way up into making complicated aerospace parts. We're gonna start off with six individuals. We're gonna hire another teacher that actually is gonna come in that I'm going to work with and I'm gonna be heavily involved in that. Although we're gonna have 27 guys in the class, I'm just gonna take it slow. I wanna pick six guys that are hungry and want it. And I want to train them myself. I wanna work alongside them. And when I feel I've got them to a good place, 
Then I'll bring the rest of the 27 students in. Everybody deserves and they need to be able to work towards having a chance to better themselves. You present us with the tools and we will, we, we, we will do amazing things. This program is going to have a great reputation. They're going to know, and it's going to be a symbol for what can be done in prisons. And when you walk out, it's not going to be like, that guy's a convict, that guy's this. That guy's from this program. He did really good, and let's get him a job. Let's partner with some different companies that get these guys jobs. That's what it's about. All right, anybody that has a question and you want to come over and ask me? Other than that, thank you very much for having me. <laughs> Boom. Right on, brother. Mm. Yeah, man. Cool. The warden, the superintendent, the director, they are excited. This is not a small endeavor. This is not a small impact. You take care, huh? It's, it's about finding hope right in a way to support themselves and their families and just kind of break this cycle. You need an open mind, you know what I mean? Like just seeing this line of guys and they want to like shake my hand and give me a hug. I am humbled. Yeah. Right on, brother. Wish you continued success, man. Yeah, thank you. And they see me as hope because I'm showing them the other side of what can happen so when you get out. Where you're at is what I'm missing. I'm missing the aggressive uh, machining, the modern tooling. So I'm really hoping to get in this program and, and work with you. I'd love to see you, man. Okay. Cool. Good talking to you. Right on. I use Oscars as America's name, you know? Yeah. We're gonna use the prison as a platform to show America and show the world how to manufacture and machine in the 21st century. I love what you said about, you know, starting with CNC. Yeah. I mean, the machine, oh, that's old. Thanks, brother. Good to see you again. This is going to be huge. I know what it takes for these inmates to get the courage to even take a chance with their life. And to see them putting in an effort to come in to see if they can be involved in this program, this is maybe the closest thing that they can use to get to the streets and be successful. So I know the importance of it. Titan's bringing hope to this community, to the people inside of San Quentin. Talking about going out and getting a job, going out and having a family, talking about getting out and staying out. It's powerful to see it right here in front of me. Like, that's powerful and inspiring. We're gonna have a machine shop that rivals the most progressive machine shops in the world right here on the grounds of San Quentin. I've looked at these men. I've made a commitment to them. I can't let them down. This means everything. On the next Built Behind Bars. I came in, I spoke to all the inmates. We picked 12 guys to interview. Do you know what a CNC is? CN. CNC. Right now I'm a lifer. That resulted in me shooting him. Having hope for a better life. You gotta get it down to six. I don't know how we're gonna get it down. In a place like this, you gotta give us hope. This is gonna be a hard decision. Which six do I say, I'm sorry, your future's not now. <laughs> <laughs>